Hey, Kerry here. As you may have noticed, I've been doing some videos on the changing uh, that I'm seeing taking place in the real estate industry. And well, this has le led me to some other discoveries that I think are very important. I'm a retired financial advisor. I retired in 2005. And about 2009, I was watching the markets and I realized that uh, the telecommunication industry was going through a major change. We were moving from 3G to 4G um, uh, telecommunications. And now we're moving from 4G to 5G. I want to share with you what happened when we moved from 3G to 4G, what I recognized and how I made most of the money I have today. Um, so I'm going to do that right after this. This video is going to probably give you the best investment advice that you will get in your lifetime. Okay, as I said, uh, the telecommunication industry is changing. And to give you some background, it started in, um, let's see, in 1980 we had 1G. 1G was those big bulky phones that were uh, uh, analog that uh, people used to carry around and talk to. And you'd constantly get uh, bad service and dropped calls. That switched to 2G in 1981. 2G was digital. It brought uh, calling, texting, and some picture texting. And that also brought the birth of what we now know as the smartphones. Well, then in 1998, we went to 3G. That provided the ability for um, video calling. You might remember that was the introduction of Skype and mobile internet uh, access. Up until that time, internet was basically dictated to your, um, your, your desktop. Then uh, 4G came and its big changes were it introduced uh, gaming services, uh, high definition mobile TV access, uh, video conferences, and 3D TV. It basically finished the connection of human to human service. And, and that has been what we've been using up until now. Well, right about that time, uh, as I said, I'm a retired financial advisor. I, was, uh, I had moved all my retirement assets over to E-Trade and was managing my own portfolio. And I asked myself the question, with this change into mobile technology, what companies are going to affect my life the most for the next 10 years? And I, I focused on Amazon, Google, and Apple. It was uh, about five years later, I added to that Facebook. And Amazon was selling for $60 a share. Google was, pay, was selling for $179. Uh, Apple 13, and in 2012, Facebook 38. This is what they're selling for now. So you can see that I just held on to them because they were changing the way I lived. So that's how I'm able to do what I want to do now, okay? So I'm, I'm looking at this and, and I'm saying, I think we're going to see the same oppor investment opportunity because this 5G is expanding it from human to human to the Internet of Things. We all have a number of things, so you multiply that subsequently, and, and it's a 20x. When we bring the Internet of Things on, the data we collect now goes 20x from where it, it is today. It's estimated that by 2035, we will be selling an additional $12.3 trillion worth of goods and services over the internet. That between now and 2035, we will create 22 million new jobs. That's, that's pretty astronomical. Got to have the right education, but that's what's going to happen. Um, it will add 29 billion 
connections and it will be the internet of things. Now the interesting thing about this is it uses low frequency waves. It, they're called millimeter waves. These waves were inefficient for the current 4G, 3G, 1G, whatever, because they don't travel distance. What happens, they're very broad, but they don't have the ability to travel distance that the gases in our atmosphere dissipate them. So in other words, you can't use it on a today's cell phone. And it isn't very good on connecting people to people, but it's very good at connecting things to things. And that is to say that my furnace can talk to my thermostat. I can control the lighting systems. My irrigation system can read the weather report. Um, an elevator can send data in a large building to a hub where it's digested and then it's compared to five million other elevators around the world and now we have the ability to predict what is going to happen to that elevator before it happens. It will happen, we will have wearable, our clothes will have chips in them and they will monitor our body which will probably talk to our phone and then that data will be moved through our phone and so now we'll be able to predict when Carrie's going to have a heart attack or when this cancer that he thinks he's going to die from starts manifesting in his body. So that's where we're going to. Now then my research said okay then who are going to be the big winners in this? Who, who has positioned themselves just as Google had positioned themselves and Apple and Amazon for 4G? Who has positioned themselves for 5G? I came up with three names. Uh, the first one is, is Verizon. And what my research has told me is nobody wanted these millimeter waves for, for years because they had limited functionality. So my research shows me that Verizon bought a company by the name of Straight Path for $3.1 billion in 2017. These are the people who controlled the licenses for the majority of the millimeter waves in the United States. Thus, Verizon now owns 40% excuse me, 48% of all these low frequency channels that the internet of things is going to transmit over. So they are going to be in the transmitting controls of this $1.23 trillion worth of goods and services. So Verizon seems to be the big good bet for the telecom industry. They currently have 5G service in Atlanta, Chicago, Denver, Detroit, Indianapolis, Minneapolis, Providence, Rhode Island, St. Paul, and Washington, D.C. They project by January 1st of 2020 they will be in 30 more cities. So more than likely you will have the ability, you'll probably have to buy a new phone to get this 5G service. Initially it's just going to be faster, it's going to be quicker, there'll be no buffering, but then they're going to start connecting all your things to it. So who's going to be manufacturing all these chips that work on this low frequency wave so things can talk to each other and then transmit their conclusions to the higher waves and put them out in uh, the cloud. That's going to be Qualcomm. Qualcomm recognized this back in the 90s and they started honing in on this low frequency uh, waves um, and that started as I say in, in the early 90s. So Qualcomm is going to be the gatherer with the chips through Verizon and then 
who's going to be marketing the $1.3 trillion worth of goods and services? Well, my bet is on the guy who's been marketing everything over the internet up until now, and that's Jeff Bezos with Amazon. He's also the one who has, owns uh, Amazon Web Services, which controls roughly 33% of the cloud, um, followed by uh, Microsoft and Google. So those are going to be also distributors of goods and services. So they would post possibly be uh, secondary picks. My first pick is going to be Amazon. The other reason is, as I've said in many of my other videos, they've started turnkey. They have positioned themselves to be putting Qualcomm's chips in the homes around the country. They've already got Alexa through um, their um, little pod as well as through the Kindles uh, out there. So they're already getting in a position to take care of that. And then I suspect they will take this, soul, this whole process into uh, commercial real estate as well. So that's my take on where the future is going with this 5G. It is in five years, your life won't look anything like what it is now. So if you've got some extra money, you want to make some good investments, I would say Amazon for sure, Qualcomm, and Verizon. Now, I'm going to stay on top of this and, and because I'm going to be investing in them as well. Um, so I would suggest you subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, so that you're not and then hit the bell so that you know when I put out a new video. Also, like the video. That gives me a better rating with YouTube, gives me higher uh, coverage, and I build, build my channel. And that's one of the things that's important to me. So if it's important to you that I research this and give you good information, help me out and like, subscribe, and ding the bell. Okay. Uh, this is exciting. Uh, again, think about think about this. In 2009, when I bought Amazon at $60 a share, it's now worth $1,816. That's a 30x improvement. Apple was at 13. It's now at 210. That's a 16x. In roughly what? Um, eight years, they're trying to change the world, change with them, take advantage of it.